Hello and welcome to the newest episode of How to Lull. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the role of the bruiser. Now, the role of the bruiser is kind of hard to define. Um, I mentioned tanks in a previous episode, but a lot of players nowadays don't always use tanks. They'll sometimes have what's called a bruiser on their team. A bruiser is someone who also has a good amount of health, magic resist, and armor for their base stats and in their item builds, but they also have some damage. So they're able to actually help the team by dealing damage and hits than their teammates may be. Able. Another important thing that cl classifies a bruiser is they have a lot of sustain. Sustain means that over time they'll be able to regenerate their health back really fast, or that they're able to last in the lane a lot longer. For example, Yorick here, his E, Omen of Famine, recovers a lot of health and so that allows him to stay in lane a lot longer. Normally I would be solo top, but today I have a talent in my lane. When it comes to the early laning phase as a bruiser, um, normally in a normal lane it would be bruiser versus bruiser at top, and so I'm, this, this case is a little strange. We do have a, we're fighting against a Ziggs who is an AP caster, and we have a talent in, in lane also. We do not have a jungler. So, it's a little interesting. Look at that. Look at that sustainer. Look at that. How much health I just gained back. Amazing. Yorick has amazing sustain. But anyway, so this isn't exactly a normal case. But in general, they would be solo top, or some bruisers can also jungle. Or a lot of junglers are bruisers. Whichever way you want to look at it. Um, starting off for items, usually... When you start items, you want to build some, or you want to get something that will give you give you sustain early on. So like, I got a Mechie pendant because I need the mana because I gain ooh fights going on because I gain enough from my um, skills that I don't need to get like a health regeneration item. I can just get a mana regeneration item and be good to go. I think we're gonna kill this guy. I don't know. All right. Um. Oh no, I'm not. He just, see, he just got Ranger Magnite. Ignite. Uh, common summoner spells that are chosen at top lane are usually either ones that want that will get you to the lane faster. So like teleport is usually one because then they can recall, go shop, and get right back to the lane. Or they can go gank mid and then teleport right back to the lane. Or teleport mid and gank or teleport bottom gank. So that's a common thing. Um, you also see a lot of ignites because since a lot of top laners do have such good sustain, if a fight does break out, using ignite will cut their healing in half, which would take away a lot of power from a lot of bruisers like Yorick here. Igniting Yorick would be a very good idea. In a so fight. back to item builds, just really, really fast here. So good items to build um, under damage. Usually with any bruiser you want um, combinations of both um, offensive and defensive. So Frozen Mal gives you a lot of health and some damage and some utility of the slow, so that's good. Emma's Impaler is good if you have a lot of health and you want some armor. Uh, Mob Mal Mortis is good if they've got a lot of magic damage on their team. Uh, as for more defensive items, here let me go to the defensive tree. War Mogs can be very good, as usual. I mean, the main key thing when building a bruiser is to just combine both uh, offensive and defensive stats. Alright, so I have skipped ahead to a, more of a team fight setting, but to, before I do move on from the laning phase, let me do mention that as a top laner, top laner is very easily ganked because of this bush right here and this bush right here. So when you're going top lane, it's a good thing to ward. The best spot to ward would be right here, because then you can cover, if enemies come up the river, you can cover if they go this way or that way. Some enemies get really crafty and come here and move to that bush, but for the most part, just cover the river and you should be okay. And we didn't really ward that much, but we weren't really in danger this match. But there's, I do have a ward right here, but we sh you should be warding there. Another thing is in top lane, just uh, be very careful because a lot of top lane, uh, like a lot of bruisers, do have uh, CC. So when a fight breaks out, you might not be able to walk away. But you probably will because you have a lot of health. But anyway, moving on. 
What are the team fights here? Uh, so here we are, bomb lane right now. Uh, I think I'm. I think we're just hanging around harassing at the moment, but I know a team fight will be starting soon. Uh, so the role of bruisers in team fights is. By the way, I'm right there. Um, here, let me go like this. The role of bruisers in team fights is to take the hits for the enemy. As you can see, during that, during the start of that fight, at least, I tanked all the hits for Annie. I also ulted Annie so she could respawn and get the kill on Lulu. And so, that's the main role of the bruiser. The bruiser is kind of like a tank. So if you if you did watch the earlier video of mine about tanks, bruisers are like a damage role combined with a tank role. They take hits and they do damage and they CC. So like Malphite for some reason decided to go for me. I mean, you should have obviously gone for me. Uh, most bruisers do like to get red buff. Red buff located here in the woods, or here on the on the blue side, is a buff that gives you uh, damage over time and a slow on your basic attacks, and it's pretty good. So don't be afraid to pick that up if your AD carry doesn't want it or your jungler doesn't want it. Now here. I made a little bit of a bad decision and tanked a little too many shots, but that's pretty decent. And that was my first death, so it wasn't too big of a deal. Because the more fed your eight, your other, uh, your AD and your AP carries get, the better off. So if you have to die for one of them to get fed, that's a good idea. A small list of uh, bruisers that are popular is Yorick, Riven, Udyr, Irelia. Um, yeah, that's a very basic list. The list is kind of hard because anyone can technically be a bruiser if they build correctly. I mean, obviously, anyway, anyone can be anything if they build correctly, but there's a lot of champs where it's like, they're kind of bruiser, but kind of AD carry. Can like, be Fiora can be built decently as a bruiser, but at the same time, she's meant to be an AD carry, so the line is very fudged, very, you know, not clear. So yeah, that's just a small list of bruisers. So I think I'm going to end this episode here. The main idea behind a bruiser is that if you don't have a tank on your team, and you do need some sort of tankiness, some sort of sustain, someone to take the hits, a bruiser is your best bet. They can still do damage, they're still fun to play. Some people don't think tanks are fun, I don't know why, but uh, bruisers are kind of tanks, kind of damage dealers. And they're very, very good to have on your team. Every every team should or have a tank of sorts, but at least a bruiser. So, Smartog13 here. Uh, this is the series How to Low. Uh, subscribe and get ready for my next episode of Junglers. Lights out.